My name is Garrett Edmondson and welcome to another one of my data warehousing videos. Uh, this video will cover briefly master data services and um, the importance that master data services uh, serves in a total uh, data warehouse solution. Uh, previously I covered data quality services and I highly recommend that you watch that video as well as it's a good introduction to master data services and master data management generally. This will be a fairly short video, but we'll cover some important topics related to master data services. To begin with, MDS, or master data services. Uh, in MDS, there's many functions and features. I'm only going to talk about two principal um, features of a master data services, namely how to manage entities and manage the management of hierarchies within master data services. These are two of the more primary or core aspects to master data services and something which distinguishes it from data quality services or DQS. MDS, um, in MDS you can manage your, your entities um, with or without business rules. This can become important because sometimes your entities or attributes uh, that describe your at, your entities uh, may or may not have associated business rules and so particularly in the case of um, entities and their associated attributes that don't have um, business rules but still need to be maintained master data services would be the best option to choose choose there and I'll uh, I'll give a more concrete example in a, in a few minutes of this a second use of master data services that would be difficult or impossible to do in DQS uh, depending on your requirements is to manage hierarchies. Um, so master data services has two types of hierarchies. Um, in master data services there's what's called explicit hierarchies and this if you're familiar with data modeling um, is what is referred to in most instances as a parent-child hierarchy. And so um, from a, a data model perspective, typically you have two columns, one that represents the parent and one that represents the child of, um, of, of the nodes of your hierarchy. And, um, and the relationship between the parent and the children give you your hierarchy. And your hierarchy, hierarchy can be what's called ragged, meaning it has uh, not fixed levels, but many different levels. And, and different categories or levels within your hierarchy can be complete or incomplete. So a good example of this is a general ledger account. So in, in your general ledger accounts and your assets and liabilities, you can have a structure that is not all your um, GL accounts will, will have the exact same uh, number of levels, whether you're thinking about assets, for example, or, or, or liabilities or net income. The second type of hierarchy are derived or natural hierarchies. And so these hierarchies do have a specific number of levels in contrast to the explicit or parent-child hierarchies, which can have a variety of different levels. So for instance, country, state, and city. So um, almost always a city will be contained within a state and a state will become, be contained within a country. And so you can't really have a country a city that doesn't have a country or, or state associated with it. And so these are what are referred to as derived hierarchies in master data services. I may give an example of, of this in a separate video as well. But what I want to concentrate on is the management of entities. Um, and so I'm going to use a, an example based off of um, Microsoft's example database AdventureWorks to try to demonstrate how to manage entities uh, for analytical purposes um, even when there's no associated business rules with them, when they have to be manually man maintained. And so for this example what I have done is I have taken uh, the AdventureWorks database um, and I, through Power Pivot, have pulled in the data and automatically pulled in the relationships associated with that data. So fundamentally what I have here is I have a calendar year which gives me my time and I'm using a, a, a pivot table against a Power Pivot uh, data model. 
uh, to display this data. But I have up in the top here in my filters, I have uh, some, some time, a year indicated. I have along my rows, I have a reseller. So Eventworks is a, is a bicycle equipment manufacturer and they have a variety of resellers that resell the equipment that they manufacture. And then I have um, an, an aggregation, extended amount of sales. It's a sales related metric um, for, for a given reseller. So in this case, Accessories Network has sold, uh, uh, sold $1,400 $1, in 2004. Acclaimed Bicycle Company, $1,700. Um, and all this is can be derived from the re reseller dimension. So, however, the management within a VentureWorks executive management has um, wants to be able to analyze these resellers on um, what are called tiers, and these tiers um, are derived through long meetings um, and have to do with uh, many different types of metrics that go into determine which tier a reseller goes into and it this tier is supposed to symbolize the uh, strategic alignment that certain resellers will have to this particular manufacturer so in other words some some resellers for a variety of reasons let's say geography let's say um, expansion possibility in terms of strategy and, and, and delivering a new line of products or a new product and maybe con contractual um, parameters in the contracts that the manufacturer has with its resellers will all influence the tier um, in which each reseller will, will reside. So AdventureWorks, the executives, want to analyze their resellers by these tiers, and resellers can move in and out of the tiers as, as needed, as required. However, there is no real uh, data source for these tiers. These tiers are determined manually um, through a variety of executive meetings and things like that. So from a, a modeling perspective and from a data warehouse perspective, it's very challenging because there's really no source for these things. And so what I'm going to demonstrate is how to model this um, briefly in, in MDS and how to use MDS um, in order to meet this requirement. So in order to implement this solution, what I'm going to do um, in Master Data Services is create an entity that represents the attributes in the reseller dimension. Um, and so this will be the first introduction to the various aspects of Master Data Services. I will include in the description of this video links to um, various Master Data Services uh, materials that can explain in detail the, these different aspects. Um, but for now, I'm going to assume that you're already familiar with that material and quickly walk through the setup process. Um, so, I've already set up the reseller entity in MDS with all the attributes um, that are in the reseller dimension in Eventworks. So all I need to do is, one, to connect to the, the MDS server, and once I'm, I do that, then the uh, Master Data Explorer little window pops up, and I can choose, if there are multiple models, I can choose the model that I need. In this case, reseller demo model. I will choose the reseller entity. And um, as you can see, all the domains or attributes within the reseller entity um, correlate directly to the attributes in the reseller dimension. So, phone, code, reseller name, number of employees, order frequency, all these kinds of good things that you would expect, address major product line that the, re the reseller uh, sells, annual sales. Um, so all of these can be influential and even additional attributes can be um, can influence what tier uh, each reseller is a part of. So now if you notice this tier attribute of reseller or domain of the reseller entity it has a null value. So, so this is the part where the mat, where the data steward would come up, come in here, 
simply by pulling up Excel and connecting to the Master Data Services server and manually, let's say on a monthly or whenever the executives decide, add or move around resellers from tiers. And so what I'm going to do is quickly, let's call these tier ones. I can add a bunch of resellers to to the tier one. If you notice, um, once I change any attribute in Excel, all the changed values goes to this orange color, indicating that I've made a change. Now I'm making the change locally in Excel, and so in order to in order to save these changes, I have to publish them back out to the MDS server. I'm just going to quickly make additional changes here. And in my example, I'm going to have three tiers of resellers. Um, of course, this, the exact details of this would depend on your exact business rules. But the important part to remember is that there are no real business rules that that can be uh, referenced programmatically. That these things are decided in in, mis in meetings, variety of meetings with the management team. So here I have completed that. I have a variety of first, second, and third tier resellers. Um, so this will be important in my analytics. Now, all that I need to do is come over here to the publish button. I'm in the master data tab of Excel and I'm just going to simply publish these changes out. I'm me as the data steward are now happy and have approved these um, these changes and so I will publish them out to the server. And I can make a um, I can make a little note for others to see if they use that there's more than one data steward responsible for this kind of maintenance. And so now that has been published out to the server, and if I scroll over to the tier attribute, it is no longer that orange color. Everything has been saved. So now that's been published out to the server, typically you'll have a nightly ETL process or something like that that will move the entity data from the MDS database into your data warehouse. And as I described in previous videos that master data management, whether it be DQS or MDS, sits in between your sources and your data warehouse. And it, they deliver consistency and conformity in attributes and the definitions of attributes and their values um, across the entire enterprise. That's the, that's the whole point of this tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply just going to, this merge statement represents uh, you, the ETL process being executed. So my my source here is my target here is the dimension reseller dimension, and then here is the source from my MDS database. And if and I'm just going to update simply update the tier uh, attribute in my reseller dimension in my data warehouse. So. executing this stored procedure as a simulation of an ETL process then updates those attributes. So now that I have updated the entity, the attribute, the tier attribute in the reseller entity and my ETL process has populated those changes over to my reseller dimension in my data warehouse, I can come back in here to the original tab, sheet one, where I have my pivot table hooked up and I can simply, um, from the data tab, refresh all the data. So that's going to pull all the data from my data warehouse and repopulate. And if you can see, now, with my tiers, I now have this able to do analysis based on these tiers. So here's my tier attribute, and if you can see, I can 
collapse and, and expand and I can get different groupings of these resellers by tier. Or if I wanted to, I can move the tier to the columns. And here I have my reseller and what tier it is in. And I can scroll down and see the breakup. Um, I want to remove. I can see in this case this the sum of the extended amounts by my tiers one two and three and so if I ever want to change if for example if I want to change one of the resellers For example, if I wanted to change this reseller, uh, Accessories Network, uh, I can do that and move it around to a different tier. All I need to do is connect up to my MDS, change it from a tier 1 to a tier 3, and publish out my changes. To the MDS server. That night the ETL process picks up the change. And I had changed the a bike store from tier one to tier three. doesn't have any let's pick all the years to make sure we have a bike st store is now a tier 3 whereas previously it was a tier 1 so that is just one quick example of MDS and how to implement entities without within MDS and how to maintain those attributes or those domain values manually um, through the use of a data steward just simply connecting up to master data services server and manually making these changes and so then the nice thing is that any reports based off of um, your dimensional model in your data warehouse will now have all these values updated as the data steward makes these changes and as the ETL process updates these changes into the data warehouse so that concludes my demonstration of master data services and how to um, use entities to um, control attributes, manage attributes that don't have business rules associated with them. Hopefully this has helped you understand the importance and the utility of master data services. Thank you.